Hello and welcome to this video. Today we will talk about automated switch tr tracks and the reason for that is a comment by user Muso7 who wrote me uh, uh, below the video regarding power function servo motors. Great video, clever stuff. I'm new to this but wondered if I could use the servos in the garden to control ray, ray points. Any thoughts or ideas gratefully received. And this won't be specifically about servos and how to use them for railway points, but this video will be generally about how to make automated or motorized LEGO switch tracks. And this will be only suitable for the LEGO 9 volt systems and the ones be uh, after that, which means power functions and power up at this point. Before that, there was the 12 volt system, but that one had different types of switch tracks and also there were official motorized switch tracks so it's not uh, that important to talk about how to motorize them. However, in the 9 volt system and in the power functions and powered up systems, there were no automated official switch tracks. And how does this even work? Normally the train would drive uh, the straight line, but if I flip this leveler, it will switch to the side line. I'm not sure about the uh, correct wording in English, uh, so sorry for that. Anyways, there's this mechanism where you have the switch and you can turn the switch and then it will drive into the correct direction. And of course, um, you might have a big layout or maybe you want to make your own completely automated train layout and then you want to use motorized controls or manual controls. And normally you would think, why don't I just add a motor? And I did that in the past and that's not a good idea to simply add a motor. You can try that, maybe it works good for you. But in my experience, it either, does, it either doesn't have enough torque to move the switch because it's, it needs pretty or it needs much torque to move the switch at all. And if there's enough torque, then the switch track will destroy itself after a few tries. So it's very complicated to get the correct building for this. And I found a, a solution I found uh, instructions on Eurobricks how to build a switch track that actually works, that doesn't destroy itself within a few uh, switches. I will link it in the description, so make sure to check the building instructions out. out. This video is based on the model that they use, and it's the only one that I found in the internet that works properly. Everything else needed to modify the switch, which I, wouldn't, which I would suggest against, because modifying the switch doesn't look very well. But it only works a few times and that isn't very good for good layouts either. The official uh, or the non-official the instru instructions that I found would lead to this. Maybe not exactly this. I built it with the parts that I had at hand and maybe um, you only want to use bricks in one color or you might re remove this uh, switch. You can modify this as you like as much as you like and it's uh, it's still possible to switch the track manually but now there's also an excel where you can plug a motor in and the original layout uses a simple medium motor which you can plug into here and then you can control the switch track and that works just fine my personal suggestion would be to add an infrared receiver because then you only have to press this 4 shot wire on the remote and um, otherwise if you use a battery box you will put stress on this because it will continue to move into in the direction until you stop it and here you can make uh, simple short commands. So my personal suggestion for using a power functions motor would be to use the remote with an IR receiver to make short bursts of commands and not to move um, the motor for a long time. And another advantage of power functions is that you can of course use the power, uh, the, the infrared remote to control it and you can also put them, put the switches pretty independently on the track, on the layout. Um, you don't need a battery box everywhere, you can simply use the, these extension wires. So this should work pretty good if you are power functions based. But with Powered Up, you can make a few other nice tricks and you've seen it in the intro video. 
where I used a uh, powered up hub. And there are very similar, mo similar motors to the M motor in the powered up system. You can use this as well and then use a powered up remote. Similarly to how you would use it with the power functions. You could write a program to move the motor, for example, for 200 milliseconds or uh, half a second. You can try it out and uh, find the correct time for your layout or for your track switch. And that should be work, uh, and that should work pretty good. But there's an advantage of the powered up system, and that is that there are more motors with rotation uh, with rotation sensors. And that way, you can simply plug this motor into the switch, and then you can only move it as far as you want. You don't have to rely on time, where you might not be sure if you uh, if you get to the point where you want. You can simply program it to move from one point to another. And um, it's exactly, or maybe not exactly, but you can move for 40 degrees and then the track will switch. Or then the switch will be in the other position. So this motor has to move 40 degrees roundabout and then it should be in the other position. And then you can move back 40 degrees and then it will be in the first position again. So that's a pretty good number to know. 40 degrees to move from one position to the other one. I also used this in the program, which I will probably show in the end. There are other powered up motors that you can use as well. You can use these angular motors and these medium motors, and all of them have rotation sensors, uh, which you can use to move exactly 40 degrees. The first one that I showed, this one doesn't have a rotation sensor. So my personal suggestion would be to use this motor if you use the port up system, but of course you can also use these motors. I think that sh they should work fine as well, but they are larger and they might have about too much torque, so you might have to limit the power. This one can run uh, with uh, like a hundred percent speed without many problems. In my opinion, that should work just fine. So that was it with this video about automated switch tracks. I hope that it helped you and that I gave you an overview about how you can build them, how you can use them. This is really the only way that I found which works properly for the switches. Everything else uh, fall apart after a few tries or you had to modify the switch track, which isn't good either. Again, if you have any questions or if you have any additions to this video, you can tell them me and the other uh, people that watch this video in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video and bye.